YouTube, it's Sarah from Losing It For Me 42 coming at you with my week 5 update. So let's start with the stats. I was 3-9 last April of 2016. Um, that was my high weight. Um, my surgery was on October 26, 2016 and I was 324. Um, last week I came to you I want to say I was 305 point something. Um, and I think it was 305.8 or 4. I'm, I, I, see, I, I seem to land on the 4s and 8s. Um, and today, which is November 30th, 2016, I am 303.8. So. I am going to say that I am 85 pounds down, give or take 0.8 pounds, but I'm going to take them. <laughs> um, so that's great, and that's a probably around a, a little less than 2 pound loss from last week. I started really hard on Monday, um, getting my protein in, getting it up to about like a hundred, despite what my dietitian says, um, or my nutritionist says. <laughs> um, getting it to about a hundred, getting my macros really in order where my carbs are really low and my fat is like lower. Um, kind of helps because that I'm on an antibiotics that I can't have dairy, and dairy is where I get a lot of my um, protein from. But it's also where I get a lot of my fat from. So I'm getting more healthier, I get healthier um, fats or proteins, like leaner proteins. Mostly I'm just doing uh, nectar protein shakes for a lot of my protein. I am eating some chicken and seafood and stuff like that too, but I'm not getting a ton of protein from that because I still can only eat like three ounces. Um, so other than my little trip to the hospital, which I told you guys all about, um, this week has been kind of quiet, which has been nice. <laughs> For the most part, I've just been trying to really get back into order with my food intake. Um, not that I was so much off. I just wasn't getting enough. Um, when Shark Week happened, like my restriction, as I've said, was really tight, and I just I wasn't getting enough food, um, and I wasn't I wasn't drinking the Premier Protein Shakes because they were making me ill, and I wasn't supplementing them with other protein shakes, so I really wasn't getting my protein in. Um, and now that I am supplementing with nectar instead of premiere, like, I'm getting it in, so that's pretty good. Um, I did start back at the gym on Monday, I know it's only Wednesday, but I started back at the gym Monday, um, I overslept Tuesday, yeah, wah wah, um, still getting used to my new phone, and it totally, the alarm turned itself off, which I didn't know it did, so... I overslept on Tuesday, and I went back today. I'm still having a lot of issues. I've always had issues with my back um, after a car accident a couple years ago, and um, as I've gained weight, it, my back has become harder and harder to do stuff with. So part of my weight loss journey is because of my back. I want to be able to, I don't know, walk across a room and not be pain. Um, so I've been going hard at the gym over the last year and you know my back has gotten into some a bit, a bit better. Not not excellent. Jeez could you stick out of your lane buddy? Um, not excellent but better and since taking the month off for surgery um, it's gotten worse. 
um, just walking 30 minutes on a treadmill really, really gets me. Walking has always been an issue. Like, I could do the elliptical better than I can do the treadmill. Uh, there's something about my gait and how I walk that screws up my hips. One hip becomes like, according to a chiropractor, I so saw one hip just keeps popping out of place. And I definitely noticed it's like a lot of my trouble is not so much my back as much as my hips. Um, so they're not as great as they have been and getting back into walking, which isn't the best activity for me. And then on top of it, my hips aren't as great as they were, has been kind of painful. Um, but I'm doing it. I don't care. I know everyone's like, go slow and know your body. My body can shut the fuck up. Excuse my language. Um, it'll whine and complain. I know when I'm in serious pain and when my body's just complaining. Um, so when it's just like whining like a little baby, I tell it to go to hell. I have fibromyalgia, so I'm used to chronic pain and I know that if you give in to it, like you'll never give anything. It's, it's terrible. So I'm all about for not listening to, to the minor pain, the pain of, you know, complaining joints going like, hey, I don't like that. It's like, well, are, are you going to fail? Are you going to break? Are you going to, you know, go out of place? No, then shut up. <laughs> so, yep, I'm getting back on track this week, and I think that's a lot. That's my newest goal. Um, I did meet with my nutritionist yesterday. I had all sorts of issues about that. Um, a, I did meet with a nutritionist. I know I had said before that, like, every time I make an appointment to see the nutritionist, I end up seeing the nurse practitioner. But I finally saw the nutritionist again, which was, like, the second time in, like, a year. Almost, well, less than a year, but many months. Um, and, yeah, I saw her, and so I thought, like, finally I could get some answers. No answers. Um, she basically said that at this stage, my diet is so limited that she doesn't care about calories. She doesn't care about macros. She doesn't care, you know, so much about carbs or she, well, actually she said she didn't care about carbs and she didn't care about, she said she was like, you can keep your fats low ish, but like she didn't really care about, um, fats either. And I was like, okay, basically the roundabout way, the thing that she didn't outright say, but I got the gist of was this isn't so much about weight loss. I will experience weight loss at this point, but it's more about, um, taking care of my tummy. Um, and they're more concerned about me getting my protein in and making sure that, you know, I'm eating the proper foods than they are about, um, any of that stuff. And I'm like, okay. Um, I did ask about protein intake per first. I'm looking at you. Um, cause I, I was really curious because she, per first is right. You go to the internet, you look up how much protein I should be intaking. And there's a mathematical formula of it's like 0.7 times your body weight. I'll get it somebody else. Um, and I did that, and it was, like, super ridiculous high. <laughs> um, and so I went to my nutritionist, and I asked her about this, and I was like, why is it that you guys say 60? But this formula says, you know, times your body weight. And I did not get a good answer. Basically, I was told that the diet that they put you on is all about being minimal. It's all about getting the minimal calorie intakes, the minimal everything. 
so that you're just getting enough to get by to maximize your weight loss. And I understand that. I understand the concept. I understand the theory. And she basically just said that 60 grams of protein is the minimal um, amount you should be getting. Is that anything less than that and you're not getting enough protein for your body to function properly. And I was like, okay. So if I go over 60, you know, what does that do? Does Will that, because it's the minimal, if I go over 60, does that convert to um, sugar? Is that kind of considered excess protein that your body converts into sugar? And she said, yes. I don't buy the math of that. I'm not a mathy person, as I've said before. I don't buy the math in that. If that's the minimum, and the internet's telling me like 200 something grams is what I should be getting, I figure if I get like 100 grams in, then I'm kind of doing halfway. <laughs> I'm not really thinking that's going to convert to sugar. Um, yeah. So, I was, I was un, impressed with that conversation. Um, I did say, like, with me going back to the gym, I've had issues before where I was on a, a low, low chloritic intake that I got really tired and I was really worn down and I really felt crappy as hell. Could you not bike in the middle? Things. Um, that I was, that I felt crappy as hell, and I asked her like, instead of upping my calories, which might be hard, you know, um, would it be more advisable to up my protein, since that is the source of energy that my body is running on. You know, if I'm not, if I'm low fat, low carb, all I have left is protein. <laughs> so I'm like should I up my protein? And she was like, well, she's very hesitant. And finally she said that I could up it to 75 if that is like, if I'm doing a lot of exercise and I feel like that is, you know, if that's necessary, but not to go over 75. Well, this entire week I've been doing at least at least close to, if not over 100 grams, and the scale is moving. So, it's really hard because we, we spend money and we spend time and we, you know, we want to invest in the process and you go to these doctor's appointments and you go, okay, like, tell me what I should be doing and they do and you go, like, I don't, I've spent my life over my entire, almost my entire life overweight. I have been counseled and lectured and I have, I have educated myself on a, a boatload of nutrition inf information. And I'm finding like a lot of what my doctor's things don't necessarily make a ton of nutritional sense. Like the fact that I went a week without eating anything like no protein, no nothing, just water. And like, I understood looking more into it. I understood that that is sometimes a common thing to do when you have um, gastrointestinal surgery. But to see that there are so many others who immediately at least start shakes or some kind of like nutrition, I felt going a week without eating anything with no calorie intake whatsoever seemed really just ill-advised. Um, and I understood some point of logic to it looking back and being far away from that starvational hunger. Um, but I don't know. Like, I'm really curious if I, I'm very, very seriously considering getting my own nutritionist who's also closer to my house. 
um, who I can talk to about this and find somebody I can have a better rapport with that I don't, where I feel like I can question this kind of stuff and go like, hey, is this really, are, are you BSing me or is this true? Because I'm not really finding all of this stuff to be like, as accurate. I'm like, I want to get, I want to get enough stuff in me to be healthy, but I also want to lose weight. And I think my doctor's goals are to lose weight. It's not necessarily to be the most healthiest. It's, and I also think they don't expect me to exercise. Like I told her that like, I used to go and I used to do a half hour to 45 minutes of cardio followed by like an hour and a half to two hours of weightlifting six days a week and she looked at me like super impressed and I was like isn't that what I'm supposed to be doing I'm like I want to get back there so I'm like I also want to be able to take like when that time comes where I'm cleared to go back and do everything like I want to be be able to know that I'm getting enough nutrition that I'm not hurting myself or, you know, setting myself into a, a gigantic caloric. I mean, no offense. I could easily, all of that exercise at the gym, and then I would walk for a half hour, 40 minutes on my lunch break, I could easily burn a thousand calories a day. And if I'm only getting a thousand calories, if I'm lucky, like, how do I do that and make sure that I'm getting enough nutrition for my body to live off of? So, she didn't have a really great answer for that. So, we'll see. I really am jonesing, even though my back is terrible. And it's kind of the fact that my back is terrible is kind of pushing me more to to exercise more. I mean, it's kind of catch-22. I exercise, I hurt. I don't want to exercise, but I do want to exercise because I know that I'll hurt less in the long run if I exercise, but I will hurt when I exercise. But I really want to get back into it. I want to get back to where I was. I want to I want to get endorphin highs from going to the gym because honestly, walking on the treadmill does nothing for me. Uh, and it's, it's just so boring. <laughs> like I watch, I watch TV shows while I do it and stuff, but it's just, it does not, I'd much rather be on the elliptical. I, like, I really was tempted to do it today and I was like, no, I've been bad enough, like not following guidelines on stuff that like, I really need to get my butt into proper gear and do the things I'm supposed to be doing. Don't do the things I'm not supposed to be doing. But I really want to go back to the elliptical. I was like, I'll go really slow. And then I was like, no, I need to be better. So that's week five. I'm losing weight. Yay. I hit another milestone. I think for the most part, I haven't really done the math yet, but, um, I'll put it in the description box below exactly if I've hit 85 or not. And I'll also put my percentages. I really find the percentages, to, to see the percentages, you know, one or two pounds is not going to really move percentages very far, but I like to see that how much percent of my excess body fat I've lost. I think that's, at least for me personally, very helpful. Um, I did have a question. If you guys made it this far, I have a question for you. In the comment box below, answer this question. I have pinned the hell out of a whole bunch of low-carb, ketogenic diet um, recipes. And though I'm not much of a cook, and I haven't cooked in many years, I just started cooking before surgery. Um, or experimenting in, in cooking again. Um, 
I really want to start, like, once I moved, and that's about two weeks, I moved to full foods, solid foods. Um, I want to start one, one or two times a week printing out these recipes and doing them. Um, and I want to know if you guys are interested in that and seeing that. Um, I will totally film it. I'll invest in a tripod and I will film it for you guys. Um, if you're, if you're, and I, I, I prefer it's with, I'm not the best cook, but if you want to have some fun and watch me be silly, <laughs> I will totally film it. If not, no worries. I'll just take photos and put them on Instagram. <laughs> okay. Comment below. Let me know if you're interested in that and I'll see if I'll, uh, I can do a whole series of just, uh, cooking recipes. Okay. Till next week, guys. Bye.